Hello everybody and welcome back to Planet Zoo where you may see that I have done, just done some very basic um, remodeling of the safari sort of ostrich pen because it was a little bit of a, a nightmare to be honest it was a, a pretty nasty looking pen before so we're just at the point now where we want to put the habitat gate in so they can go and sort sort them all out and everything so hopefully now it did think that my ostriches had escaped, so I've paid to have them boxed up, I believe. Maybe that one hasn't been paid. Um, so I've paid to box everything up. So when we play, they should all get boxed. Cool. And hopefully, they'll <laughs> then count this as... Um... Oh, my vet research is complete as well. Lovely. So we've got the bongo research. You can put some more stuff into their pen a bit later on. We'll... I'm working on this at the moment. Okay. So I've had um, a bit of a revelation. I with this, with this uh, really cool, and the, the view is not great from here at all. Blah blah blah. But one thing I have realised about these barriers, okay, is that I can edit the barrier, and there is a thing here called window, and I can put windows into my barriers here. See? I'm going to do it on the other side too. So we could just make these sides. And yeah, I know there's one shorter than the other. That was the only way I could get it to work, okay? But yeah, so now they can look at the, the, yeah, the dudes. So, um, another thing that I just quickly did off camera for you guys, I will just show you now, is I popped just a screen here uh, for the bongos. And I popped a little screen over here for the pangolins so that we can get on with putting more animals in this. I know this is what you want to see, right? We can get away with putting some more animals in here now. So I'm going to, um, hopefully this now counts as a full habitat. I think it does. We'll just take that away and go in here. Yes, it does. I did also have another really cool idea. And that was... In this particular uh, habitat, I'm going to have lots of really cool animals, right? So I thought, what would people... No. No, I'm going to go a different way. I'm going to go from here over. Okay, so we're going to do a viewing platform. So I'm going to go up like this. And then we're going to go down like this. Oh no, that's on... Okay, we need to go even higher, I think. Maybe not quite that high. Oh no, it's all going wrong. Horribly, horribly wrong. No, actually, that'll be fine. I may just need to um, slightly adjust the length of some of this, though. So let's go back, 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 and then start bringing it down here. Nope. So I do need a little section bringing it out from there. Okay, go back, back. And I'll make the path length one instead of two. One, and then we can go back to two. And then start going down. Down. Oh no. Why do my plans never go right? That's just so slightly out. Okay. Be about here. I may just need to, to move the path very slightly just to facilitate this. I'm trying something very, very... I haven't tried this before, ever, so, you know. Might not always work. Let's put in another section of path at uh, regular height. Oh, why does it always try to, to wiggle towards me whenever I try and flatten it out? It's ridiculous. Okay, so now we're going to go down. Okay. 
I'm going to delete path over here. And we'll keep going down. Excuse me, who said you could do that? Yeah, it was only like very slightly off. So honestly, I'm just going to... Honestly, we could just do that. Why did that one work and that one doesn't? Oh my goodness me. My life, I don't know. No, I, want, I want a wiggle, I want a wiggle in my path. There we are. Wiggly path. That actually almost makes it slightly more interesting as well. Okay, cool. So we've got this like cool bridge over the top of, uh, of this pen now. Hopefully that doesn't make it look too ugly. But I think it'd be a really cool thing for the guests to be able to see. I'm going to put um, one of these. I'm going to move these. They, I tried to do the bridge before and it didn't work very well. But I think that's working now. One thing I need to check is that it is still a habitat as well. That's like a, an educational sign there. I don't know if that's the right way around. I can't really even see. It looks to me like that's the wrong way around. So I'm just going to do a little ZZ on it. ZZ. I don't know, I don't think I need to... Oh, it's education board legs. I wonder if I need to then attach an education board to it. Because that to me looks like it's just a thing to attach it to. That's interesting, huh? So, uh, if I go to uh, uh, facilities and I go to... Oh yeah, it's just the legs for it. I didn't actually even realize that. You have to put the education board on it and at the moment, we may as well have a, some education about ostriches. Wonderful. So if I could just come out of there, then we should have some ostrich education. Why is that not coming on? Because it's not powered. So apparently the other section of the, uh, of the park is powered, but this is too far away to be powered. So I'm going to put the, the speaker down and then I'm just going to try and do something about the power situation, I guess. Now a transformer. Hang on. So if I moved it slightly, if I just put on a, um, an overlay quickly, my overlays. No, they've been boxed for too long. Okay, let's just um Why why can I not unbox you? Right, so you need to move into this habitat. You need to move into that habitat. You need to move into that habitat. Where's my fourth ostrich gone? Funny how the boxes are now tiny as they're moving them around. Okay. And then you are the last one that needs... No, you're you're already being moved. You're being moved. You're being moved. Okay, that's fine. We've got hungry animals as well. I'm not too happy about that. They should be fine over here. Why are you hungry? The bongos have low welfare. Oh, gosh. This game does not like me just to just to keep things at a, at a sort of at a level, does it? It's just like, man. I had to pay a lot to recapture all the ostriches, so I'm not surprised that my finances are looking a little ropey right now. Um, why have you got low welfare? The social issues. You're too stressed. There's too many babies in the pen, basically, I think. That that seems to happen when there's like loads of babies around. 
they get distressed and they've not got enough room and their social group is too big, but it doesn't actually tell me that it's a problem with social because um, social is based on adults. So they can be kind of struggling for space because there's too many babies. Ah, oh, right, there's not enough shelters now because there's too many babies. That's what it is. So I need to try and find a space for another shelter, but they already have like a bajillion shelters in here. So it becomes a, lot, a little difficult to try and put another one in for them. So what I really need to do is thin the animals out. I wonder how long it takes for them to not be a juvenile anymore. Or whether I should uh, get rid of some of them. Because some of these some of these have got really nice genetics now. You see that one, for example, Bakiri. This one. Yeah, you know, they're much nicer than some of the adults. So what I may do is um, sell some of the adults back. So let's have a quick look. Um, I'm going to have a look at their genetics and all that sort of thing. And just... Um... Oh, it's got really good immunity, for example. Okay, let's go into zoo animals. Just have a look, because there's too many of them in here, basically, at this point, because of the babies. So we've got one, two, three babies. So I would like to ideally try and get rid of three female adults. And how about we just take out the, the least liked ones? Which is these two. Could do that. But also, I'm kind of looking at, at a breeding program here as well, so it's like, hmm. I want to have a good look at them all. So um, the problem is as well, like you can't just go in and have a look at their um, at their genetics and things from this screen. But this is the screen I really want to move them from, and I want to just check them out. I've got two kibibi, two kibibis as well. That doesn't ha that does not help at all. Okay, so you're the one with the appeal of one of. One one four nine. Do you know what? I'm gonna I'm definitely getting rid of that one. Definitely. And Omolara. Let's go check out Omolara if we can find Omolara. Okay. Want to have a look at you then? Yeah, Omolara's genetics are pretty bad too. So it looks to me like the appeal might actually give you an idea as to how good the animal actually is. Slightly. It might be a good idea to get rid of ones with with like low appeal. So I have a lot of ostriches. Oh, they're all in the animal market. What am I doing? Animal storage. None nothing in there, that's fine. Right, so I want to get rid of uh, probably Kibibi there, Omolara there, and Sophia there. If you look at these ones that I've bred, they've actually got much higher um, likability. I'm going to send those to this, the trade center. I may need just to quick sell them because uh, they are. I can't release them to the wild unless I've bred them or bought them for conservation credits. So they're off to be sold, and hopefully that should de-stress the bongos a bit. Now, next question is why are these guys hungry? Is they not getting food in their food bowl? The water bowl has got some water in it. Their food has no food in it. So I want to call a keeper to the habitat to try and ask them to feed them. Also, we could do with a mechanic to the barrier. I may just hire another mechanic pretty soon. Let's have a look at the barrier status. That seems okay. I've got three alerts on the bongos, but I think that's just that they're really stressed out. So I'm going to just continue now and just see what happens to the bongos. It's all bongo low welfare. And that one's going to get moved back into a proper habitat, so that's fine. We may need to hire another keeper. And I might need to put, I forgot food bowls and things in here. 
Yeah, we've got no food in there again. So I'm going to hire one more keeper just because I'm worried about the animal's welfare at the moment. We're doing a lot of moving around, so I want I want the keepers around too. The keeper hut is inefficient. Why is it inefficient? I don't understand that at all. How can we make them more efficient? Okay, so, so the ostr ostriches are expecting offspring, but they can have a larger social group than they've got right now. I only have four of them, so breeding them is not a problem. One thing I would really like to do, I've got too many donation boxes around here that uh, are in the wrong place, so I want to put one at the top here. I also want to move the habitat board over to the other end a little bit, because I think if it's over here, it will just catch the power. Yep. <laughs> so that's fine. The educational speaker might need to move as well. I don't know if that's just saying periodic power course. Might even be cool to put the educational speaker like down here. Oh no, I've already got one down there. Maybe down here? Would that give me I need to talk about the ostrich and then I'll stick one of these over the other side as well. So hopefully they've got a really good view now. Between the, I didn't know you could put windows in. <laughs> How dumb is that? I didn't even know you could put windows in there. But I didn't, so oh well. We'll just get one of these donation boxes over the other side. And then I'll be super happy over here. And then I might just put some guest facilities around. And this is going to be such a cool space. So what do people think of this habitat now I've done stuff? I suppose the view is okay. Yeah, what? How much time did I spend making a bridge and windows so that you could go, meh. <laughs> meh. It's all right. Kind of sucks though. I mean, one thing I could do is maybe draw the path in a little bit because I, I was going to put the, the bridge over that way, but I decided to go this way with it. So that's the thing. But they do tend to be on the path a lot. So I think I might do that. I might just play around with the paths again because I just cannot leave this alone. Because I want perfection. No. Action. I'm just going to stop it while I do that. Like, and this is the one thing I was saying that I would probably do with franchise mode. Is that I would be much more... Um... Let's go. No, from here. It's going to have to go from there. And I want it to align to the grid of this. needs to go about there so it's moved in a little bit I may need to delete some path and just like play around with it a bit to get it to work but it's fine well let's deselect the grid so it can try and uh, match itself up now and see if we can get that to work which we can so wonderful they're a little bit closer now on that side they might have like a slightly better view it's all it's all about trying to get the view better for them oh no what am i doing even doing here nobody knows what I'm doing here oh that was really good what happened there oh that's amazing let's have that oh 
no, that looks really janky. No, no. Oh, why does it do that? Why is Control Z like? Why does Control Z have such a, a long reach? It's unbelievable. I really dislike that because it means I, I want to just con control Z like a tiny thing and it's like and the whole thing goes it's like no I just spent it just a minute now and this is all just because one person like moaned about this is the sort of thing I do as a YouTuber though one person moans about something and I'm like oh I've got to fix that now oh no I'm gonna spend half an hour, like, well, hours, hours and hours of my time fixing things that probably don't need fixed. It's half a bit longer, and then it's like less sections for me to have to worry about. Okay, cool. And then over here, we could go, we could, we could bring that in a bit as well if we wanted, which I do. So, um, we're going to align to grid again. We're going to align to that grid. Delete the path down there. Put some more path in. And I will have this perfect, because this is going to... The reason I really want this to be quite perfect, if I can, is that this is going to be a really quite cool big display of quite a lot of different animals so I really want it to be good I may have to extend it later as well but I'm not too worried about that right now let's just oh no get back in there I don't dare control Z anymore it's like the power of control Z is, is too much for me I'll go line to a grid again So I can put the path there or there if I align to grid. I think I might just want to put the path there and so it's like really close to the barrier. I don't know how, how much I'll get away with with that. Will I get away with it? Will it be... It looks actually fairly straight to the barrier. So I think I am getting away with this one. Cool. Okay, now I want to delete some paths so that things all just match up. There we are. And then I'm pretty happy with this actually. As much as I do want to move the entire pen to center it, can I do that? Or would that mess the whole thing up? Can I actually take the whole thing and move it? Interesting question. Edit barrier. I know that little little Nancy told me. Old Nance. That I could select the entire barrier by dragging the whole thing around. And once I've done that, maybe it will let me grab and move. Yes, it will. Just try and make everything a little more centered. Oh, well, that was satisfying. That was super satisfying. I liked that a lot. It was good. Okay. Yeah, with that, that's looking so much better now. I enjoy that. That's good. Right. So we've got like educational board up the top there. We've got some donation boxes around the place. People are really enjoying going up there by the looks of it to go and see the ostriches from a bird's eye view. Mwahaha. <laughs> So I think that's really good. Like, I was really unhappy with that pen before. I thought it sucked. Now, I like it. So we're good. 
So now what I want to look at is uh, interspecies interactions. And oh, I've got a, I can I can say hi. Hello, because I get conservation credits for saying hello to people that visit my zoo. There are an awful lot of ostrich offspring going on here, though. So I, what I want to do again, I'm going to give the male ostrich um, some contraceptives. Because <laughs> I've got like a real sort of... Um, and as soon as those males grow up, I will have to have a look at which one I want to sort of take on. Because it looks like we've got um, a male ostrich that's been born there. I want to go and have a look at all their genetics and see which one I want to take on as my new one. That one's 1650, so I reckon that one's probably got some pretty, pretty nice genetics going on. So if I have a quick look, animals in this pen. So we've now got um, five, and Azzy is our new one. So Azzy, over here... I click on him. Has some pretty nice genetics other than being a little small. So I think he would be a much better um, male than the uh, the other male I've got. So if I have a look at the other male, and have a look at his genetics, so we go back to the, the habitat, and we go to animals, and we go to Abiki, and then we can click on Abiki. Um, we can go and see his genetics. See, he's got really good fertility. So the t fertility would be down a touch. But, and the size is a bit worse, but the immunity is really good. So I would be having less sickness by having this male instead. So let's have a look again. at. Um, so we've got a little bit less fertility. 83% there is still really good. Longevity, 66 versus 66. So it stayed the same. The size has gotten smaller, but the immunity on this little guy is through the roof. It's 66%. So we're definitely getting an improvement there. But then if he has another little baby, or if any of the other babies that get born have better genetics, then obviously they will be the chosen one. <laughs> so I'm, I am looking to, to breed better and better all the time. So... What you've all been waiting for all episode, what's the new animal going to be? What new animal are we going to put in? And I, what I would like to do, if I can, is to try and find some giraffes. So let's have a look. Because these guys, everyone's pretty happy now. I think, I think the pangolins have now been fed as well, because they're not complaining about being hungry anymore, which is great. So I want to see if there are any reticulated giraffes around, because I would love to have giraffes. And they could, they could say hello to the people on the platform. <laughs> That was part of my plan. <laughs> Half a reticulated giraffe filter. Let's see what we've got, if anything. What? Why have we got loads of ostriches still? I filtered by a reticulated giraffe. Is there none? Is the entire animal market just ostriches? Apparently so. Look at this. See, they're selling that one, for, that one for 20. I don't understand why I've chosen reticulated giraffe and it's gone for, com oh, right. That would be why. I have ticked common ostrich too. Must have done that last time. I don't remember doing that. Right, so we have some reticulated giraffes. And we do, in fact, have some. Low fertility may be difficult to breed. That's interesting. Why are they selling them for such high prices then? That's so weird. We do not have any for, um, we do not have any giraffes for less than 200, but I, I have been saying hello to people and getting some conservation credits for that. And I really do want to have something really cool in my zoo. So I don't know whether to wait or whether just to go for it. Let's have a look at the genetics on these. The females aren't too bad. I want to have a look at the Zoopedia for giraffes and just see what their herd size needs to be because if they're not happy with just two of them, then that's going to be a problem. I've got some of their enrichments already, which is fantastic. Up to four males, up to eight females. So they can live as a pair if they want. They are confident with humans. The guests cannot enter their habitat. Well, technically the guests are above the habitat, so hopefully that's cool. <laughs> oh, I really want giraffes. I would breed them and it would be cool. 
But do I wait and see if any better ones come up? Because this list changes all the time. And sometimes you might even be able to pick them up. Not for conservation credits. Oh gosh, he's going to go in two minutes, in two seconds. No, I've missed that one already. So I'm not getting a breeding pair now because I, I... But still, that's a pretty bad giraffe as well. Genetics on that would take a while to breed out. I don't know how long they take to breed as well. In fact, that's something I should check. Like, can I can I see how long gestation is? 15 months. And you get one offspring per mating event. But it's pretty easy to breed them. And takes them to four years to get to sexual maturity as well. And you consider that my zoo so far is four years old. Yeah. So I want to try and get as good as I can or try and get them for not conservation credits I would happily spend longer if I didn't have to spend my conservation credits on it I wonder you know soon I'll be able to sell my animals and stuff like that as well and that would be really cool so we're about to have another offspring of the ostriches um I didn't and I should be um putting contraceptives on the ostrich male here so because uh, I don't want it getting too out of hand and it's easiest to contracept the male if there's one male and like a million females oh hang on it was Ali that was the male ostrich or my beer wow I was looking at the wrong one you're a male I was looking at a female how dumb was that okay decent but uh, yeah I don't want to have like uh, hundreds and hundreds of babies all at once because it gets a bit of a nightmare so it's Ali needs to have contraceptives because we've got a few babies on the way and I don't want it all to get crazy oh no I did do that okay cool and Simba also has contraceptives right now so we've got the three baby bongos and we've got two or three baby ostriches coming actually you know what we could have more we could have more because we can afford to have a couple of babies and we can afford to have up to a group of eight. So we've got one, two, three, four, five right now. We've got two more on the way. No, no, I need to. I need to keep the contraceptives on. I don't, I don't want huge amounts of ostriches all the time. And I, it, like if they get annoyed at being in a group of more than eight, that's a problem. Right, I want to go and have a look at the Zoopedia of, for the ostriches. And the reason I want to do that is I want to see what their... Um, Interspecies things are the interspecies enrichments. Oh, why don't we have a look at zebras? That would be a really good one. There's always sable antelopes and things like that around. Thompson's gazelle. I haven't looked. I haven't looked for those either. Let's have a look for Thompson's gazelle because. Yeah, reticulated giraffes are gonna take too too much money right now. I'm gonna need to just build up to them, I think. Let's have a look at Thompson's gazelles. See if there's any good ones of those. There's a few. They're all females though. That's not gonna be very good for breeding, is it? So let's go and have a look at the zebras and see what we've got in, in the, on the zebra market at the moment. So it's a plains zebra. Okay, we can get some for, yeah, okay, that's fine. Like, if we have a look at their Zoopedia as well. And I want to have a look at what size group they need to be in. One male up to five, so I'm going to need a male and two females, otherwise they won't be too happy. They like to have one dominant male, so they'll fight if there's a lot of uh, males there. I don't need a ton of males. I tend to just try and keep the best male and, and move on the rest. So... That's fine. Back to the list there. I'm going to want to buy... Okay. There's, there's two females I can get for cash. And then I might put the contraceptives on the worst of them. And the immunity is awful on these two. If I can get a decent male. Decent fertility and immunity on that one, even though he's fairly cheap. 
All right, we can do that. Are those like albino ones or something? I don't understand. I think they are actually. I think that's albino genes. Um, so yeah, I'll buy these two. That's fine because they're just for cash and I can always just sell them later or whatever I need to do, but they're good to start me off. And I'm going to adopt um, Kamaria as well. No, Uber, sorry, I need a male. So we're gonna do that and then hopefully later on I'll be able to get more more of these credits as my babies grow up and I sell, I move the adults on and the babies grow up and they have babies. And then I'll actually be able to be like, I'll set you free or, or whatever. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So the zebras are going to need to go straight to quarantine. Oh, we've got a new baby. Let's have a look at the genetics. All right, genetics on the baby. Oh no, hang on. We're looking at Irby. So we're not looking at the baby. Let's see the baby's genetics. Baby's genetics are not so good. So that's fine. Are there any other pregnant ones? I, I think you can see if they're pregnant. If not, I may just try and have another baby. I am going to spend a lot of time looking at their genetics and stuff. Because that's the way you make money in this game. The conservation credit money anyway, which is what I'm mostly interested in. So we've got, I think it would give you a symbol or something if the, the animal was pregnant. So I what I want to do then is I want to take Ali's contraception off for now and see if we can have another baby. I also want to have a quick look at the females and see what who has the best genetics and I'll put contraceptives on based on that as well. So I'm just going to pause it because it'll be easier to click on them and have a look. So Nima. There's like no longevity at all. Abiki is reasonable, other than the immunity, but I think Ali has decent immunity, so I think Ali and Abiki as a pair wouldn't be too bad. And you can actually see in the stud book, um, not in the stud book, sorry, in the... I don't know why they're like... That's fine. So Nima doesn't have very some doesn't have very good genetics. So let's go over here and have a look at Irby. Irby ha probably has the best genetics actually out of anybody. So I'm actually going to just because of Nima's longevity gene. And Abiki's immunity gene. I might give Nima a contraceptive. I don't really want anything like down at zero. It's not great at the moment, honestly. I don't have great choices. But there's contraceptive to Nima. The pangolins don't seem to be doing much in the way of uh, mating right now. I'm um, not sure why that is. Or are they? Oh no, they had a baby. They did have a baby. So baby pangolin. Let's go to you and see what your genetics look like. And then we'll look after the zebras, I promise. Okay, let's go find you. You are tiny and you are cute and you're a pangolin. 100% fertility, 100% immunity. That's probably better than the male in the habitat. So I'm gonna go and have a look at the male that we have at the moment, which is a uh, Huang Fu. So your genetics. Yeah, much worse than the new baby. So that's fantastic. So we're going to be looking at a much nicer baby. The appeal on the baby is What's your appeal. 1425. So it's up. So we're getting better. We're breeding better animals, which is amazing. 
the bongos we're just gonna kind of wait for them to grow up um uh okay so i need to do i need to remove because i did remove a few of the of the bongos which are now in storage and these need to all be quick traded back they just there's nothing else i can do with them so that just gets rid Oh, darn it, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do a quick quick trade. So we'll just get a little bit of money back for them. And they're all gone. So now the plain zebras, I need to just uh, move all of those into quarantine. See, releasing rats of the wild, 13 credits. I paid like 300 credits for the trade for trading on the on the market which is terrible so you get a really bad return but i mean that makes sense because you can breed a lot of animals so you want to kind of breed lots move them all on and then buy new ones it's, it's typical it's typical video game trading isn't it you never get a good deal so what i want to do is move you to quarantine And you, quarantine. And thank goodness it's only quarantine that you have to move them to individually because that would drive me mad. So we have zebras now. Oh, so good, we have zebras and we have babies and we have lots of people in the zoo that's going up all the time. In fact, what are my challenges at the moment? Release one habitat species to the wild and I'll get a thousand back for it. Increase my zoo reputation to two stars, and I'll get 2,000 for it. And uh, it's still inf my info center profits as well. Okay, that's fine. I'll just carry on with what I'm doing. Not a problem. The community thing, as far as I could tell, um, the community one was... Oh, pandemonium. Giant pandas. Right, right. Until the 1st of December... We need to breed 75,000 giant pandas to claim the rewards. So it might be worth me, next episode, working on some pandas and uh, and carrying on with them. Although really I've got, I've been very much working on sort of African plains sort of animals around here. We've got the little pangolins and may or maybe actually, maybe we could sort of have off here some like uh, pandas and stuff like that because then that would go with the pangolins so we could maybe put it off behind here and make a panda pen that would be pretty cool we'll do some awesome stuff with that okay so I need to play this for a little while so that we can actually get the zebras out of uh, out of quarantine and into their pen and check on them and make sure they're all okay and everything also we did have some enrichment items for the bongos which might help them feel a little bit happier. Let's have a look. So they're much happier now I moved a couple of them out. So when we get babies, we do need to start moving adults out of the pen. Um, otherwise they get a little overcrowded and that's basically what happened there. But research is complete. I have discovered more bongo stuff. Oh, the bongos are completed, completely completed. Common ostrich hasn't even been started though, so let's do some stuff for them so that they'll be a bit happier. So the bongos, we should be absolutely able to do tons of stuff for them. So let's go to enrichment items. How, how is their enrichment? Their, their food enrichment's awful, so we'll probably be able to really improve that then. Bongo. Oh yes, there's lots of cool stuff for them. So, we've got a plant screen. Might go nicely by their water, make them feel a little bit less uh, hemmed in around their water. So now they're on toy enrichment, like 100%. So let's just get some food enrichment. So uh, a grazing feeder and a barrel feeder. I think we already had the ball. Let's stick a little barrel in there. And a hanging grazing feeder would be amazing. If I just turn it around up here, then the guests can all see them going for the if they fancy being a little brave. They are a little shy, these guys. Their food enrichment, however, they don't have full food 
enrichment. I don't understand why that is. Maybe I could give them another ball or something. Aha! Yes. They just needed more. More of what they already had. Right, my quarantine has passed and my zebras are getting ready to leave now. So let's... Now the bongos are super duper happy. Look, 96%. They just need a little better nutrition. I'll see if we can have level 3 nutrition yet. We probably can. Because we researched them so well. Call the mechanic. Also, the barrier's in a bit of a state. If I'm finding a lot of the barriers down, we might need to hire a new mechanic. I am kind of semi-aware of that right now. Before I, Probably before we make any more. Let's get the best food for them. So they should be absolutely 100% happy now. And that's what I, I love. Oh, Aziza has matured. Wonderful. I'll wait for the other two to mature. And then we'll start doing some more breeding. We'll get rid of some of the less genetically good ones. And we'll start breeding more. It's, uh, you have to control it a lot more with these uh, animals like ostriches and bongos because they seem to breed a lot and you can really um, cause them issues. They can be really unhappy because they get really overcrowded. So you've got to really just keep an eye on that. And it's, it's part of the management of the game, I suppose. Okay, so before I end the episode, we have to get the zebras in. Okay, absolutely. So this is going to be... And we I'd probably like to get them happy if I can as well. So, time to go to your new home. And say hello to the ostriches. I hope this pen is big enough. For everything that I want to put in it. <laughs> it's quite large. I mean, it is... 3,000 meters. So, I'm hoping that will be enough for whatever I want to put in. And um, the path there is a little messed up. I might just redo that quickly. I'll get the zebras in first though. But that gate got messed up when I moved the pen around. So I might want to delete the habitat gate and, and redraw it or something. Okay. So let's uh we got all the zebras in now, I think we do. Let's see how happy they are with this. They are really actually quite happy already. Which is amazing. The interspecies bonus is already sitting at 20%. So the more animals we add in, uh, it's already making the ostriches more happy. Which is amazing. They need some more enrichment though. So I'll, I'll see what en enrichment I can find for all of them. Um, so let's undo for bongos. And let's see if there's anything that we've already unlocked that would do for a plain zebra. Yes, apparently the barrel feeders are good for them. We'll pop one of those in. Apparently the grazing feeder, and again, that's another thing that I would enjoy putting just like right by the window so that they can, uh, that people can see them using it. Or maybe a little like that, just on a, a bit of an angle. And then also the grazing ball feeder, which again, we'll put by the, by the glass so people can do, see them doing cool stuff, basically. That's the idea. They don't seem to be too worried about the terrain or anything like that. They seem to be quite happy on the same terrain as the ostriches have. So that's pretty nice. Um, let's have a look at the, the toy enrichment for them. So they like the grab ball. The little screen thing. So I'm going to put the screen around just under the bridge there. So they can just hide under the bridge with their little screen. We'll give them a herb scent thing. And a rubbing pillar. You stick that at the top there as well. So this is getting much more full of cool toys, isn't it? Right, so zebras, how are you now? 69%. Their meal quality isn't great, and that's about the, the thing bringing them down the most. Oh, actually, if I just play it, they're 100% on their enrichment already. 97% welfare. Amazing. I'm going to see if there's anything I can do about their meal quality at the moment. Possibly not. So the ostriches still have grade one food and the zebras also still just have uh, grade one food. That's fine. But yeah, this is getting much uh, fuller of animals. Eventually I imagine they might want some plants and things, but yeah, they, they fitted in there super fast. I'm super happy with that. 
I wonder if I could maybe get something else in there with them. You know, I feel good about my success there. So um, how are we doing for space? I'm really happy with the space. They needed 1500. If they start like looking like they're getting stressed and things like that, then I may need to increase the space of this habitat. I've made it 3000, which is double what the zebras need, for example. But as you get more and more and more animals in, I might find it's not enough. And if that's the case, I may need to extend. So I could even like do something like put like a little um, like extension out to the side or something and make it like a little sub pen or something like that, you know? And then we could have like a, a, a bridge going over and we could have like a little... And they could, they could go in the different sections. That'd be pretty cool, right? I, I'm liking doing interesting things with this. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, cool. Right, ostrich enrichment. <laughs> we don't want to leave them out. Common ostrich. C for common. They like small balls. They like the herb scent marker, so that's pretty cool. So we'll put a little ball in for them. One for the guests, too. <laughs> and we'll put a sprinkler in for them. Sprinklers do seem to work without water. I don't know if that's meant to, <laughs> to be a thing, but they do. They seem to work without water. I've not found a reason to have water in here yet. I, I, I don't know what that's all about. So at the moment the only thing that they're complaining about is um, food enrichment. Okay. Was I just on... Um... Oh, they want a forage box. That would go nicely in this corner actually. Because it's nice and flat over there. And a slow feeder. Pop that over there. So they're, they're getting quite full of stuff in here now. <laughs> Hopefully they don't need too much more. Um, we're going to pro probably start needing hard shelters for some of the gazelles and antelopes and all that sort of thing. So I may need to move things around. For example, that bed might need to come up top here or something like that. Or, or go in a bit of a, a smaller space so I can fit in the larger hard shelters. Well, that's fine. We're doing well with this pan, I feel. So I'm going to go back to animal trading and see what else we can get. How about we try for an American bison? Let's just see if I, I'll take off the filter for the zebras. There we are. Right. So we can have a male, 25 credits. Or like gets up to 225 and stuff. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually adopt him straight away. And then I'm going to go to Zoopedia. I'm hoping that the pangolins are not gonna fight. I will have to have a look at their social group in just a minute because the, the male just matured. Up to one male. You cannot have more than that, but you can ha you need at least two females for them to be happy. And then I'm just going to let them breed up to their 15, probably. And then I can choose nicer uh, babies from that. That's fine. So if I go back, I can just take the two females that have uh, well, the best genetic ones. Right, you're good. You're reasonable. You're terrible. Yeah, so I'll take the two more expensive ones there. And we'll get them in here, because it took barely any time at all to get the zebras happy. I was really happy with that. Oh, I'm getting snapchatted. I'll have to reply to that once once the American bisons are here. So um, I'm going to just get them into quarantine. But I'm thinking that maybe it'll be next episode before I get them into the pen. But that's fine. So I'll just quickly do that before the end. And then we'll go and have a, a look at the pangolin before I forget. I don't want pangolin fights. And it looks like they mature at one year old. Wonderful. They've had no contraceptions and we've not had a second baby yet, so... 
we'll have to see about that. Maybe having more males will help with that situation. need the animal trading section and I need to get my American bisons and move them to quarantine. I am quite glad it comes back up after you move them. That does definitely help a little bit. And then I do want to have a little look at the, the guests' happiness. I mean, it, it looks actually pretty good, their happiness. The education rating is slowly going up. I don't know if there's more I could do with that. Um, I do want to go, uh, probably by next episode, I want to be having the mechanics doing mechanic research. I need more mechanics. But the zoo looks like it's not doing very well. And yet we started on Twitter. We've made 6,000 at some point. So I think uh, the expenses might be to do with the fact that I've purchased some uh, expensive animals recently. But that's, that's how we make our money. That is how we make the money. So, that research is complete into the ostrich. Nice. But our, our ostriches are totes happy now. And our plain zebras as well. So I'm actually going to put the research back into the pangolins. Oh, you know what we can do now? You know what we can do now? We can give the ostriches better food. There we are. Better food for you guys. Wonderful. If any of them look like they're starting to suffer at all, then I'm going to need to possibly put a new keeper in. Barriers. How are they doing? 66. 85. These pangolins don't have to damage that barrier, do they? 79. I don't understand why they're so unhappy about the... the you are the blinking animals. Like that, this is the best. I'd be so super happy about this if I were them. <sighs> and we have done some more pangolin research. Fantastic. I'll just carry on with that. I can maybe give them some slightly better food at this point. So we've passed quarantine on the two bisons. I'm going to just have a look. As I say, I did say I'd have a look at the uh, pangolins Zoopedia. And just make sure that they're not particularly worried about dominance and things like that. So, what's their name? They are Chinese pangolins. We're going to see. They don't have any dominance. So that means that they're not going to be... One of them isn't going to try and be an alpha male. And they're not going to fight over that alphaness. Uh, so I'm quite happy to have up to three females and up to three males. Oh, the group size is one to three. So I believe that possibly they might be a little unhappy at having four of them in there. Let's have a look. Yes, they don't like having that many adults in their social group, so one of them will need to go. Now, I like the genetics on my new baby, and I would like to keep one male to two females for obvious reasons. Um, we're expecting offspring, so unfortunately my male will need to go. It's always a shame to have to do that. There we are, so you're going to need to go back. So the trading center, I'm afraid, Mister, you did a good job. We'll trade you back some cash. And then off you go. One of my bongos has matured, so we're just waiting for the third one to mature, and then I'm going to um, have a good look at them, decide who stays, who goes, and we're going to start breeding them again at that point. We'll go through another breeding cycle. So this is the way I like to do my... Like, I definitely have breeding programs in this zoo. It is a definite thing. I don't just let them go wild. You know, it's definitely like we're doing breeding programs here. So it looks like quarantine has been passed. So we'll pop the bisons in and then, then I'll end the episode, I think, there. So. Zoo. Animals. American bisons will be under eight. Two, three of you. All past quarantine well. They've got really good ratings, actually. Move to here, Habitat 4. 
And the zoo is doing well for finances right now. So I am going to just pop in here and hire one more mechanic. And then I would like to actually start mechanic research. We do two. No, as soon as I heard one, that was a problem, apparently. But I want to go to the workshop and have a look at the mechanic research. Okay, so we can have a few different themes of our uh, our huts and things like that. Oh, in goes the in goes the American bisons. In they go, look. We could research better food shops, better staff facilities, or better barriers. I actually think, honestly. Better shelters and climbing and better barriers are the best two things to start with. So I'm going to have one of you on barriers and one of you on shelters and climbing. And when you don't have anything to do, then you will go back and research those things. Wonderful. So let's go and have a look at how these American bison are doing in here. Just had to stick them in. There we go. They're super happy already. Um... They're not really getting much of an interspecies uh, bonus there. I don't know what they're supposed to have for their interspecies bonus. I mean, I think that the ostriches should be getting a decent one from them. Oh, only 20%. I thought the American bisons were meant to go in. I'm just going to check the ZPD again. I think they were meant to go in with the... They were meant to help with the common ostrich, weren't they? What have I got on the wrong species? I really hope not. They're super happy in there, though. Oh, okay. No, they'll need to be moved. They're happy where they are. I think I may have gotten confused with the African buffalo. So, that's fine. Um, what I will do is I'll move the American bison. They are supposed to be in with a pronghorn antelope. So, I'll move them into their own pen uh, with the pronghorn pronghorn antelope a little bit later on so if I go to the pronghorn antelope they I assume want to be with the American bison right okay that's fine that's fine we can just make them a new pen that's not a problem at all and uh, probably next episode we'll make a panda pen but they seem to be like super happy in this pen it didn't cause a problem at all so I probably won't give them any of their like enrichment stuff in here until I move them because they're pretty happy 94%. They got some good stuff in there. They're pretty happy, so I'm, I'm just leaving them there until I can sort it out later. But yes, that is very cool. We've got a really cool pen here. I think people are really enjoying it. Hopefully, let's have a look. They like all the different animals in here, and they like being able to see the zebra as well. The zebras are bigger, so they're easier to see in there. So I think I'm going to leave it here. Oh, fighting for alpha status bongos. Well, we will have to do something about that next episode. Because I keep doing things. I keep like managing one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. And we're never going to get to the end. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, then please do leave me a like below. If you'd like to see more of uh, Planet Zoo, then please subscribe. And I'll let you know when the videos are out. I hope to see you next time. In the meantime, though, please look after yourselves and keep being awesome.